Welcome, and in this video, we're gonna tackle overhead recovery in your LMN budget. Overhead recovery is one of the last screens, and it will require a completed budget for it to make any sense. So you can look at this screen for education purposes before then, but if you're gonna use any of the numbers that LMN's gonna show you, you have to make sure that first, your budget's complete, and second, it's profitable. And once you have those two things mastered, now we can look at overhead recovery and really know the numbers that are coming out are the numbers you need to use for estimating. So assuming you're there, let's dive right in. Recovery. We're gonna to go to our LMN budget again, but this time down here, we're gonna click OH recovery. That stands for overhead recovery. You'll notice on this screen, there's three different methods for recovering overhead. And you can switch between the methods by clicking the activate button. The multiple overhead recovery method is actually the one that we recommend and is the one that's gonna be selected by default, but you could choose any one. So then the question is gonna be, well, which one do I choose and why? So let's explain that for a second. We'll go through each method here. First, I'll talk about the single overhead recovery method. Single overhead recovery method is pretty simple. It starts like this. It takes your overhead costs and divides it by your job costs. And what it works out for me is that 33% of my job costs are overhead costs, or another way of saying it, overhead is 33% of our job costs. That gives us a lot of information for estimating. When I work out the costs of an estimate, that's that estimate's job costs. And if I know overhead is 33% of my job costs as a company, then on that estimate, I should be able to add 33% to that estimate's job costs to figure out how much overhead. If I did that on every job, I'd naturally recover all my overhead. So super simple method, we're not talking about profit yet, just that's a simple overhead markup. But a super simple method, anyone can sort of get their head around it and it works. The problem or why it might be weak is that 33% applies to all cost types. So whether it's labor or equipment or materials, any job cost, we're gonna mark it up by 33% to get to our break even. Now it's easy, but it's also not very realistic. The above methods, multiple and field labor, will both argue that labor is far more complicated to manage than say something like materials or subcontractors. And we wouldn't wanna have the same overhead markup on a material as I would labor, because labor requires more overhead to manage. We at LMN agree with this, and we would recommend you use one of the upper two. Of course, you can use any one that you like, but we certainly recommend the above two. Let's take a look at field labor for a second. The field labor hour overhead recovery method is simple in that it works like this. It takes your overhead costs and then also looks at the number of hours you put in your field labor budget. Those are your crew hours. Remember the hours for only the people who work on jobs. That's why that's so important. So if we take overhead and we divide it by those labor hours, we end up with a overhead markup per man hour. So if I have this much overhead, and this many man hours to spread it out against, then that's the overhead markup we need per person per hour to get to our break even on every job. Now, all I need to do when I'm calculating my overhead recovery on each job is add up the number of man hours, multiply those man hours by this rate per hour, and you'll figure out how much overhead you need to add to the job. So again, very simple method, works great. This time it looks at the difference between say materials and field labor and really actually does the opposite of single overhead. It puts all overhead on labor because labor is again, the hardest thing to manage. Doesn't put any overhead on subs or materials or equipment, just strictly on labor. Now the top method is a little bit of a mix of both the bottom methods. It agrees that labor should be a higher markup than say subs or materials, but Multiple says, well, everything should get a little bit of overhead. So what it does is has a graduated overhead recovery system. Subs have a very low markup because they don't need a lot of overhead to manage. Materials, a little more. Equipment, a little more. And then whatever's left is gonna go on labor. A little bit more complicated calculation, but here's what's happening in the background. It's looking at your subcontracting costs and saying, if we mark those up by 5%, how much would we recover towards our overhead budget? and it subtracts that amount from the overhead budget. Then does the same thing for materials. Material markups 10%. So for instance here, my material forecast expense is 221,000. If we mark those up by 
I can bet I'm going to recover $22,100 of overhead from that material markup. So that would, in a sense, reduce a bit of my overhead by that amount. The rest I'm going to recover up here on, say, equipment and labor. So same thing with equipment. It would say we're going to mark up these equipment costs by 25% to recover overhead. Once it's done equipment, material, and subs, it's going to know how much overhead you expect to recover based on your forecasts and your markups of your overhead from those three. Only thing. The other remaining overhead has to come from the only thing left, and that's labor. So how it calculates your labor overhead, and the reason why this one doesn't change is because you have already forecast your labor, and based on these markups, we know how much overhead is remaining after we try these markups. So then it's a simple calculation. You simply take the overhead remaining, divide it by your field labor budget, and you end up with how much you need to mark up your field labor by to recover the rest of your overhead. And that's why that one's not changeable. You have to use that number if you wanna flush out the rest of your overhead. Now you can change this number. For instance, if I wanted to recover less overhead on equipment, and maybe I wanted a little more on materials, you're free to do that. Notice this changes, dynamically recalculates itself, always making sure that the balance of your overhead is recovered on your labor. That said, we recommend sticking with the defaults. They've been tried and true, proven in this industry for years. That's sort of the most common scenario. Questions on overhead recovery? Hit us up on live chat. Check our help section on goelemn.com slash help. Look up overhead recovery and see all the frequently asked questions. It's probably there. But if you can't find your answers there, then hit us up at advice at goelemn.com. We'll be happy to work with you to help you understand how to recover your overhead so that your estimates are accurate and profitable. Thanks for joining us.